uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good, good evening. Thank you very much for joining this session. This talk is about CRT kernel team activities. First of all, let me introduce ourselves. One of the presenters is Li Lin San from Moksan. He is a technical steering committee member in CIT and the governing board member of Open Chain Project. He is also actively working as Debian developer. Another presenter is myself, Masashi Kudo from Cybertrust Japan. I had acted as Open Daylight Ambassador and currently act as CIT Kernel Team Chair. CIP stands for Civil Infrastructure Platform. It was founded almost four years ago as a collaborative project under the Linux Foundation. CIP kernel team was first formed in 2016. Since then, the team has steadily worked and improved processes to sustain the infrastructure of civil platforms. Today, we first explain about CIP. Then, CIP kernel team activities will be explained in the upstream first and CIP open source tool sessions. Testing is acting a key role of the kernel development. The testing activities will be explained in the CIP automated testing session. Open source tool session is covered by SESA. Other sessions are covered by Kudo myself. Then let me start with what is CIP. When you hear civil infrastructure, uh, you may imagine power plants, water gas delivery systems, disaster management systems, public transportation systems, or surveillance systems. All are true, but there are a lot more around us. Even industrial IoT devices can be categorized into civil infrastructure. The way to develop all those systems and devices have been changing. Before 2000, they had been developed with proprietary components. But after starting Millennium, Software layers were clearly divided into competitive layer and non-competitive layer. And people had focused on proprietary applications in the competitive layer to differentiate functionalities. Recently, the situation has become much complicated because mobile and cloud technologies have become more commodity. Systems and devices now consist of much more components, but the development resources have not been so much changed. Therefore, people are focusing only on the proprietary applications with limited resources. Now, there are millions or trillions of civil infrastructure devices which are using similar software components like Linux. They share the same industrial requirements, that is, security, sustainability, and industrial gradients. They should keep satisfying those requirements during their life cycles, which are usually very long. Therefore, super long-term maintenance becomes a key. However, there were no common solutions for base building blocks of civil infrastructure. Therefore, same development and maintenance efforts should be spent each by each separately, even in same companies. By motivated to solve those issues, civil infrastructure platform, as known as CIP, sets its goal to develop building blocks to satisfy industrial requirements with open sources. We named such building blocks as open source space layer, in short, OSBL. OSBL consists of CIP SLTS kernel and CIP core packages. 
facility stands for Super Long Term Support, and we aim to maintain SLTS kernels for 10 plus years. CIB core packages contain only dozens of packages. They are carefully selected and will likewise be maintained for long term. You will notice that more packages, say hundreds of, hundreds of packages, are needed to develop real systems or devices. While CIP provides OSDL as commonly used building blocks, those additional packages should be added by users who are provided by Linux distributors. There are various activities listed up as candidates to achieve our goals. Among them, we selected activities, colored and numbered from one to six in the table by gathering the member companies of opinion. CIP governance structure is, is explained in this slide. Governing board is organized with platinum members. It decides whom CIP should collaborate with, what CIP should invest, how budget should be allocated, and so on. All the technical issues or directions are discussed at Technical Steering Committee, in short, TSC. All the member companies can join TSC meetings. The meetings are usually held once every two weeks on the web. Under the Technical Steering Committee, the six activities are proceeded as teams or working groups. We formed CIP kernel team to work on SLTS kernel as well as real-time Linux. Testing team was formed to work on automated testing. In addition, there are three other activities that is CIP core team, security working group, and software update working group. Currently, there are eight member companies in CIP and are actively working on those activities. Our annual membership fees are pooled as budget and used to support developers or maintainers in CIP. The budget is also used to invest projects other than CIP. One of member companies reported that up to 70% effort reduction can be achieved by applying CIP to entire organization in the company. It is because activities like OSS license clearing, vulnerability monitoring, kernel and package maintenance, etc., can be coconized instead of doing each by each. Then let's move on to the CIP kernel team activity. Primary goal of CIP kernel team is to provide CIP SLTS kernels for 10 plus years by fixing versions to fulfill the required level of reliability, sustainability, and security. There are two kernel maintenance, one kernel mentor, and two kernel developers in the team. While we are highly motivated to work on the project, we don't think we can achieve the goal by ourselves only. We definitely rely on outputs from upstream projects. The question is how to use those outputs and how to work with upstream projects. Here, I show two development models. The left-hand side shows one community model. The project with this model branches its base from upstream and evolves by its own. This model enables the project to ramp up quickly, but in the long run, it will be difficult to backport upstream patches due to conflicts. The right-hand side shows upstream first model. 
The projects are all starch combs, only if those starches are already in the upstream. It may take time to introduce a desired patch because the target patch should be accepted by the upstream at first if it, if it is not in the upstream yet. But it enables the project to share its outputs with the upstream. At the same time, this model eliminates the risk of conflicts. As a side note, please look at this graph. It shows the gross trend of commit counts for each LTS. As you can see, a few hundred patches are committed to each LTS per month. This trend makes cherry picking quite difficult because CIP is aiming a long-term maintenance, upstream first model is a preferable approach. As explained so far, the upstream first principle is essential to achieve industrial requirements, especially in terms of long-term maintenance. CIP adopts the upstream first as a development principle we collaborate with upstream projects. Before using their outputs, we upstream what we have and don't, don't keep them locally. By rotating, upstreaming, and using continuously, we are moving toward our goal. So what does upstream first mean for CIP kernel T? Our upstream is Linux mainline and LTS. As Mark found, contribution is our first action. Feature upstreaming is done by CIP member developers. On the other hand, CIP kernel team contributes to upstreams in more general manner. We developed open source tools in order to work on contributions effect efficiently. At this time, we'll talk about those tools in detail later. As Mark II, use is the second action. We use LTS kernels to release CIP SLTS kernels. For those releases, automated testing adds a very important role. Testing activities will be discussed later. As Mark III, integrate is the third action. By integrating those SLTS kernels with CIP core packages and additional packages, industrial systems or devices can be developed and maintained. I'm going to elaborate those three actions each by each. First action is contribution. Because we use upstream outputs, we value the general contributions to upstream to be fair. Therefore, CIP kernel team works on backporting of bug fixes and security touches to LTS. These statistics are the contributions by CIP kernel team to LTS. CIP SLTS kernels are based on LTS 4.4 and 4.19, but our contributions are not limited to them. Contribu contribution count differs depends on the length of each life. How we contribute are recorded in commit logs in LTS. Reported by, signed off by, act by, in addition to authors and CCs, are major counts in the total around 1,600. The second action is use. We use LTS for CIP SLTS kernel basis. As just mentioned, CIP SLTS kernels are based on LTS 4.4 and 4.19. The first releases of SLTS 4.4 and 4.4 RT were done 
in 2017. We plan to maintain them to 2027 for 10 years. The first releases of SLTS 4.19 and 4.19 RT were done in 2019, and likewise, we support them for 10 years until 2029. CIP kernels are released by following the flow listed here. Please note that differences between stable patches and CIP member patches. Stable patches are reviewed in GitLab, while the patches from CIP members are reviewed on Comet CIP dev mailing list. Currently, SLTS 4.19 is released twice a month and 4.4 is once a month. It is because commit counts of SLTS 4.4 are reduced. SLTS 4.19 RT is once a month and 4.4 RT once every two months. So far, we have steadily released kernel kernels, thanks to our maintainer, by following release frequencies I just e explained. This chart shows how upstream releases are used in our SLTS releases. Both LTS 4.4 and 4.19 are maintained for six years by LTS project. Because CIP aims to maintain for 10 years, the rest of four years will be maintained by CIP. We made major releases in 2017 and 2019. This means that our major release frequency, our major release frequency is once per two years so far. Therefore, because 2021 is approaching, we started to discuss about new SLTS kernels. The third action is integrate. Precisely speaking, this action is not done by kernel team, but by CIP kernel user. CIP refers source packages or binary packages in Debian. If you would like to use Debian source packages, you can use Yoktopoki as a build system. CIP core packages contain tens of packages, which may not be sufficient for the development of end products. So, users can add necessary packages from Debian by writing recipes. Debian provides LTS key, even extended LTS, so super long-term support including user and packages, can be based on these themes. As I explained, CIP kernel team is effectively contributing to upstream. Open source tools were developed to help this activity. As this one will unveil how the open source tools are used in the kernel team. So, as this one, the floor is Thank you, Kuro-san. Hello, everyone. This is SZ Lin. It's my pleasure to meet all of you in the air. Okay, so let's talk about the open source tools. The open source tools for backporting process. Mm, to optimize the backporting process, improve um, efficiency for backporting patches, and ease the effort for maintainers, the CIB kernel team creates and uses the open source tools, that is, classify file patches and CIB kernel stack in our backporting process. The tool of classified fail patches filter and fetched backport patches from the stable kernel mailing list. 
and classify the needs of bed protein in cervix stable kernel. The scope of the bed protein is based on cervix kernel uh, convict repository. Another tool is um, CIP kernel sec. The kernel, a CIP kernel sec tracks the status of security issues in kernel identified by CVID. The scope of a bed protein is based on CIP kernel config repository as well. As you can see, um, the kernel team will uh, evaluate the result from these two projects and um, decided to bed pro to the uh, stable kernel or the CIP kernel just by case. I'll um, elaborate on the details in the next few slides. Safety kernel sec. This tool tracks the status of security issues identified by CVID and in mainline, stable, and other configured branches. So um, this repository is public and those, you can link it to the project website via the QR code. The CIP kernel sec is a source code levels vulnerability scanner. It gathers um, CV information from multiple upstream, uh, such as stable kernel, Debian kernel, and Ubuntu kernel. The kernel team focuses on maintaining the CV affected in kernel 4.4 and 4.19, and may that put the specific uh, CV commit to the stable kernel, as the case may be. So, um, in just like the in, um, previous slide, the CIP kernel sec provide the web view. So um, you can just use the uh, browser to know uh, how many CVE in your current uh, kernel tree. And you can get the detailed information um, via this um, graphic tool. Let's talk about the crossfire fail patches. This project tracks the status of fail patches and crossfire patches into applied and to applied types. Just like uh, CIB kernel said, this repository is public. So you can also link to the website via the QR code. As you may know, the stable kernel only accepted the patches are related to bug or security fixes. Therefore, um, the patches in the stable archive are final to be reviewed. This project uh, tracks the status of stable uh, kernel patches and crossfire patches into applied and to applied type. The CIP kernel team where we do it and make that pull the specific commit to the stable kernel, as the case may be. These are the example to uh, apply or to apply tabs. As you can see, the applied patches means these patches are already applied in the upstream. And to be applied patches mean uh, we have to spend the time to analysis and uh, maybe add just some conflict and those we can send it uh, to the upstream. Last but not the least, CID kernel convict. As I mentioned before, um, 
The CIP kernel stack and class file trail patches are based on this uh, repository to decide the uh, action. This repository collects the kernel configuration from CIP members. So um, to define the maintenance scope in CIP kernel 4.4 and 4.19 respectively. This is also the maintenance baseline for CIP kernel set and cross by field patches. These are the um, updates regarding the open source tools. Thank you for your time. Kudosa, allow me to give the floor back to you. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, then our last question is CIP testing. There are three goals defined. The first is centralized the control of automated testing systems. Physical devices should be distributed in several regions by considering availability. The second is to promote continuous integration by automating testing exe execution on those distributed devices. The third is to support all CIP reference platforms. In this chart, I'd like to explain how CIP testing team follows upstream first principles. Kernel CI and LAVA are upstreams of CIP testing team. The first action is to upstream code and to review code of those upstreams. We are funding to Kernel CI because we agree with their goals and hope that this new project ramps up quickly in order to contribute to communities overall. The second action is used. The team uses kernel CI and LAVA to build automated testing systems. The automated testing systems are built on four testing labs located in, in Asia and Europe. Here is the testing architecture. Testing targets are CIP kernel sources as well as LTS release candidates. We are aiming to catch issues in LTS release candidates so that we can contribute to upstream more. The team is also working to create a container-based CI infrastructure for GitLab. Its objectives are to scale horizontally and dynamically. The infrastructure enables to run an arbitrary number of CI jobs in parallel and to scale up and down based on the current workload situation. CIP reference boards are listed here. These boards and equipment are prepared by CIP member companies and placed in their own or common lab. They are set up to be connected via internet. The test trigger is applied from LAVA to the board and equipment installed in the test environment, and the results are displayed on the web. Currently, CIP is running two tests, sector meltdown checker and LTP. For real-time testing, we added cyclic test plus hackbench. We plan to incorporate TSF test in the in future. These tests are executed on CIP reference boards each each by each. Those test results can be checked through Lava interface. This is a list which shows scheduled testing on data. 
in order to see more detailed results, you can click bottom. CIP is collaborating with Kernel CI to improve the range of tests supported by Kernel CI, starting with LTP. Further collaboration is being discussed between CIP and Kernel CI, and we will update as we progress in future. So uh, let me conclude today's talk. CIP kernel team follows upstream first principle and contributes to upstream. CIP open source tools are developed to facilitate the contribution activities. By taking advantage of kernel, kernel LTS, the team steadily releases CIP SLTS kernels and aim to maintain them for 10 plus years or more. To reduce CIP SLTS kernel release cost, the team is closely working with CIP testing team to build automated testing systems. These activities are not only to provide SLTS kernels for 10 plus years by fulfilling industrial requirements, but also to contribute to upstream. Recently, more and more people have agreed with us by hearing about our activities. If more people work with us, we can expand our activities more, and we can contribute to other projects more. So please join us if you are interested in. If you'd like to know more, there are links for related information. This page talks about our weekly IRC meeting. It is open to everyone. This page talks about repositories on GitLab. URLs of open source tools explained by Ethan are here. And other information is listed here. That's all from us. Thanks for your time to join this talk. Are there any questions? Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for very much for joining this session. Uh, I'm Masashi Kudo. I'm shaking hands. Hello, I'm AZ. Uh, so currently, okay. we, we have couple we have couple of uh, questions here. So um, first one is: Is every LTS version chosen for SLTS in CIP? Yes, actually, uh, let's see. Uh, I can show you this slide. Okay, uh, so far, uh, we are selecting uh, LTS. Uh, currently, we selected 4.4 .4 and 4.19. Kudo, can I cannot uh, hear you? Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, sorry, sorry. Maybe uh, you have okay. to mute uh, your computer. All right. <laughs> I, uh, what I'd like to answer is that uh, uh, instead of uh, picking up every LTS, uh, CIP is selecting uh, 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 some LTSs. Uh, so far, we have selected 4.4 .4 and 4.19. We are selecting LTS every two to three years. That's our current policy. Yeah, um, as you may know, there are uh, six 
six LTS version now. So um, the CIP won't choose every version as the SLTS. We will discuss and um, exchange our um, idea in the CIP technical steering committee and make the consensus afterward. So as mm -hmm. you can see, uh, we have two version now, not every uh, LTS. Uh, yes. Okay, so uh, next question uh, is, how would you recommend someone to get involved in the CIP? Yes, uh, that's a great question. Uh, let's see. Just a moment. Let's see. Yes, this one. Uh, uh, as you know, uh, for industrial devices or systems, uh, there are uh, uh, several requirements. And in order to satisfy uh, those requirements, there are several activities uh, required, required to do that. And uh, uh, so far, uh, we have uh, listed uh, those activities which we believe that uh, those activities are needed. However, only six of them have selected for us to uh, currently uh, working on. If uh, more members can join, uh, more uh, wide a wider range of uh, activities can be accomplished. Uh, in addition to those activities, uh, we are working on the super long-term support uh, project. That's, uh, uh, as uh, uh, Sizan explained, we are uh, currently considering the uh, uh, CIP kernel config. That is a uh, uh, member com company's uh, reference board uh, target. If uh, people would like to have their own platform or boards to be extended for 10 years, then uh, please join and please work with us. For those uh, boards or platforms can be extended ten for 10 years by working with uh, together. Thank you, Kudo-san. Uh, uh, allow me to add some comments. Yes, please. Thank you. Let me scroll down the slides first. Regarding the question, my answer is, it depends. It depends on your interest in the um, which kind of the activity. So basically, I would suggest to join the CIP IRC meeting. It's a public IRC channel, and we have a regular meeting on every Thursday. So I, I will recommend um, if you have interest in CIP activity, you can feel free to join the CIP IRC weekly meeting. Okay, so uh, next question is with kernel 5.4 version and later LTS also qualify for SLTS. Uh, yes. Uh... As uh, Esi-san uh, explained, uh, we discuss about the new SLTS releases at the TSC, TSC meetings. And uh, currently, uh, we are uh, going to skip 5.4. Uh, and we are going to probably, uh, we are discussing to uh, select this year's LTS as the next candidate. 
And uh, uh, therefore, uh, again, uh, 5.4 is uh, skipped uh, at this moment. Yes. OK. So uh, the next question is, do you publish results on mailing list? Um, uh, this results mean the, uh, probably uh, kernel releases, maybe. Then if that is the case, uh, yes, uh, we are announcing our CIP kernel releases in CIP dev mailing list. Yes, here uh, at the top uh, line, you can see a CIP mailing list, CIP dev. This is the mailing list. Uh, you can see our announcement of our kernel releases. Yep. Regarding the uh, kernel development, the CIP kernel team will work with the upstream. That is stable kernel. So you may find some contribution from CIP members in the stable kernel mailing list. And um, as the kudos are mentioned, uh, every uh, result will be public in the CIPDV um, mailing list as well. So you can uh, refer to uh, below link in this slide. OK, so next question is, uh, there are any remarkable features you are expecting in currently released kernels, but not yet in any SLTS. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. This one. Uh. Uh, okay. Remarkable features, uh, yes. Mm. Uh, this is kind of a little bit controversy, but uh, 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 one thing uh, 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 which is very difficult uh, to achieve is uh, function safety. And uh, at this moment, uh, uh, there are uh, several projects working on the function safety, but uh, uh, at this moment, we are not incorporating such a functionality yet. So that's one uh, area uh, we may need to consider. Uh, Esteban, do you have any comments? Yeah, we welcome every um, feedback from everyone. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So next question is: Is there uh, is there interest in the CIP kernel for automotive applications? Whoa. Uh, uh, this is also a, a very uh, interesting question. Uh, and uh, also, uh, uh, let's see, uh, the area automotive uh, applications uh, uh, seeking is one, one, one functionality is uh, function safety. And uh, uh, that, that is, uh, how to say, uh, a little bit difficult part uh, we can uh, address. But uh, uh, yes, um, because uh, automotive uh, Linux also requires uh, long-term support. And uh, 
myself, uh, I myself is interested in the uh, automotive area. Susan, do you have any comments? Yeah, I agree with you. Um, since the automotive application needs the maybe uh, functional safety or security features. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. so maybe in the future, right, Kudo-san? Yeah. <laughs> okay, the next question. What sort of industries customers are most interested in SLTS? Uh, uh, I, uh, when I, uh, visit customers, uh, uh, they, uh, uh, interested in, uh, several areas, uh, not only, uh, uh, super long term support, but also, uh, RT patches or, uh, other, uh, features as well. And, uh, uh, let's see, uh, those, uh, customers, users, uh, include the, uh, how to say, uh, uh, MFP camera, uh, factory automation, and, uh, uh, of course, uh, automotive, uh, area as well. Uh, there are various areas, uh, there are various customers from various industries or various segments are requiring, uh, LTS, S super long term support at this moment. Mrs. Susan, do you have any comments? Yeah, uh, from my personal experience, the uh, customer needs a longevity products in some vertical market, such as a uh, railway, power plant, mm. oil and gas, mm. etc. Yeah, mm. they have to maintain the uh, system for a long time. So. Mm. Yeah, they need it. Okay, so next question is, how did you choose 10 years as the support left time? Yes, uh, frankly speaking, uh, 10 years uh, is not uh, enough for those uh, customers. Uh, usually, uh, 15 years or 20 years are requested, but, uh, uh by looking at the, uh, state of the arts of, uh, uh maintenance, uh, technology or, uh, our community activity, uh, we are, uh, going, we are starting with, uh, 10 years. By, uh, how to say, by refining our uh, methodology and our policies, we may extend uh, such 10 years uh, to 12 or 15 years. But uh, at this moment, uh, we are working on 10 years as a first, uh, how to say, super long activity. Yeah, as you may know, it took lots of resources for maintaining the Linux kernel. So 10 years is um, just as um, Kudos mentioned, just a number for us now. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so we only got uh, 20 seconds left, so we, we don't have enough time for answering the question. Anyway, if you have any question, I think you can reach us via the mailing list, 
right, Kudo-san? Yes, uh, we are welcoming you uh, to join. So <laughs> we are looking forward to uh, hearing from you more. Okay, thank you. Then uh, again, uh, thanks very much for having joined our session and have a great, uh, great time in this event. Then bye-bye. See you, bye-bye.